I did a short course in ceramics and straight away thought I should have been doing this that whole entire time. <laughs> That's a very cheesy thing to say. <laughs> My name's Georgia and I'm an artist who works with clay. Today I'm going to show you how to throw a simple bowl shape. So wedging is the first stage for wheel throwing. So it's a process of kneading the clay, a bit similar if you've made bread or something like that. And the purpose is to knock out pockets of air when you're throwing and also to kind of align the particles of the clay um, so that it's just nice and smooth. There's no kind of hard bits or soft bits, at all. it's all one piece. So. Here we are at the wheel. So these days wheels are electric um, and they've got a foot pedal and it functions like a car pedal in that that's how we're going to speed up and slow down the wheel. Got a bucket of water nearby um, because we need that to make the surface nice and slippery so that we can pull up the walls. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just slightly dampen the, the wheel head and then we're gonna form our clay into a, into a round shape um, and stick it down onto the wheel head. So a really good shape to make when you're learning to throw is to just start off with a simple cylinder. You can throw a cylinder and turn it into a bowl or you could turn it into a bottle or put a, um, a little spout on it and make it a jug. Sounds simple but it's not so simple to make um, and it's definitely a good one to practice. This is our first part of centering and it's also sticking the clay to the wheel head. If we don't do this, as soon as we start to centre it just pops off the wheel head and it can be quite frustrating. And so then I'm going to wet my hands and I'm just gonna hold them on the surface of the clay to make it nice and slippery. I'm not using any pressure. We're creating what's called slip on the surface. So slip is just clay and water, and without that, it's very sticky and it's very difficult to, to move the clay around. So the next stage for centering, I'm going to put both of my hands on either side of the clay. I'm gonna brace um, my elbow against my body, which is a really nice and kind of strong position to be in. And it's a, rather than a kind of squeeze, it's more like a push and pull. So I'm just gonna try and bring my hands a bit closer together. I'm not using too much pressure at this point. I've kind of gotten this bottom part fairly center, but this top bit's not. So I'm gonna keep squeezing and I'm gonna do a process called coning up, which is gonna bring all of this clay that's inside up to the top, and then we're gonna push it back down. So squeezing from the bottom, it comes up, all those wobbles are now in the top. And then to push it back down, I actually just have to push it forward. And my left hand is sort of catching it while the right hand pushes it down just gently. And that's basically centered. So the next stage is opening up. Um, and so this is gonna become our, the inside shape of our bowl eventually. Just an indent to begin with in the very center of the clay. And then I'm going to press the wall just gently towards my palm here. And that's gonna thin the wall out a little bit and it's gonna create a nice flat base on the inside. And so the wheel is going at sort of a a moderate speed, it's not going very fast, and my hands are moving very slowly. So now that we've opened it up, we've got basically, this is already a bowl shape, so really I'm just gonna thin out the walls now and make it a little bit more refined. So I've got my left hand on the inside and my right hand on the outside, and I'm just gonna gently squeeze these two parts of my fingers just together and slowly bring them up to the top of the rim of the clay. And as I do that, the wall is gonna get taller. I'm going to just kind of just open up the walls a little bit and already on the inside, that's a nice little bowl shape. And then the last step before we cut it off the bat is I like to just trim off some of this excess clay down the bottom here because it just saves me a job later on. And we can cut it off. If you're throwing on bats, which lots of wheels have these boards, which are called bats, and they just sit on top of the actual wheel head, um, that's a nice feature of them. You cut your pot and then you can just put it to the side and you don't have to worry about warping it until it's firmed up a bit. So after I finished a whole degree in drawing and print media, I did a short course in ceramics and straight away thought I should have been doing this that whole entire time. <laughs> the gratification that you get from making something that's really artistic, really creative, you can really part of that creation process um, and then getting to use it forever after that is um, really quite a it's quite a thrilling experience. <laughs> so this is the next stage of the throwing process, which is called turning or trimming, where we trim the base of the pot. So these are our pots from earlier, um, and they've firmed up a bit to a stage that's called leather hard. And then we get a little bit more clay to stick the pot down. And that's just gonna kind of hold it secure while we do our turning. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just 
take off some of this edge so that that's a nice smooth edge to begin with. And a general rule of thumb is to follow, try and follow the contour from the inside. So you kind of have to visualise what you've thrown on the inside and just try and follow that a bit around the outside. So you wouldn't have something that's really round on the inside with really straight sides. Usually you try and follow them. So I'm going to brace my hand against my body. I like to hover a hand just on the centre because then my hands can touch and that helps me locate them in space again. So you can see why they're called ribbon tools with the ribbons of clay that come off. And often beginners are really worried about going through the side of their pot and carving away too much clay. But usually a problem that beginners have is actually making their pots too thick. So just, just go for it and rest assured that there's probably enough clay there. So now to cut into the side and make my little foot, I'm going to cut a little straight edge in here. And so now we'll do uh, this inner bit. So this is the most um, delicate bit because this very centre point is probably the thinnest. So there's probably not as much clay there as there was on this kind of chunky side. So I'm not going to take too much out of there, but I am going to take a little bit. And that's pretty good. The last all important step is to sign your work. Um, so some people make uh, what's called a maker's mark or a stamp. Um, this is just a little one that I made out of clay. I haven't actually used this yet, so this is its first stamp. It's made in Voyage. Well, thanks for making a bowl with me on the wheel. Um, good luck with your next decisions on glazing. That's often the hardest part. Um, but whatever you choose, you'll enjoy using your new bowl. Thank you.